Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about the school psychology praxis. So I took this test yesterday and because it's online, it's all multiple choice, I got my score right away and I passed. I got a 177, which is a little bit lower than I expected and what I wanted to get, but it's a passing score and honestly, that's all that matters. And I'm going to reiterate this point over and over again during this video, but Basically, you don't need a perfect score, you don't need a high score, you just need a passing score. So that should be your goal. Why do you need to take this exam? As a school psychology student, some states require it for licensure or certification, and if you want your NCSP through NASP, you need a passing score of 147. That's why I took it. I do want my NCSP. I think in Virginia, you don't need the praxis. It didn't say I need the praxis, so I would just go in to NASP or go into your state like Department of Education and then you can look up all the requirements for becoming a school psychologist and that's what I recommend that you do because each state is so different just make sure you go and do your own research but if you want an NCSP which is a national certification you need to take the practice and get at least a 147 which is actually under 50% I don't know if it's accurate but you divide how many you got correct over the total and then you add 100. So if I got, it's out of 140 questions, if I got 100 right, you would do 100 divided by 140 and then you would add 100 to that number and that would be your final score. What is the Praxis? I got this off an ASP. It says the Praxis School Psychologist test measures whether entry-level school psychologists have minimum acceptable competency for professional practice. So I guess they just want to measure how much we learned and how much we know even though we finished our coursework and we should know all of this knowledge, you know, looking at our grades and our GPA, but I guess it's another standardized measure and another way for them to make money. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about the test format. It's online on a computer, you usually go to a testing center, sometimes they have the ETS like official centers around you and you can go over there and then they have other places that you can take it. You can check on the ETS website for testing centers around you. It's multiple choice out of four options and for these questions you have to choose the best answer and they usually have two answers that are good answers but you have to choose the best one. So in that aspect it does make it kind of tricky because you have to know oh these two choices make sense but which one is the best practice or which one is the most correct. You have two hours and 20 minutes to take the test and I think it's ample amount of time for 140 questions because some of them, it does take a while to read the question if it's like a case study or if it's like a scenario, you have to read about the child and the family and all of that. But then there are other questions where it's like one sentence and you either know it or you don't know it. On the online format, you can mark the questions that you want to come back to and you can also review the test as you go. So if you click review, it shows you all the questions, it shows you what you have answered, what you haven't answered, and then which ones you marked. And then at the testing center, the people who, like the administrators, will give you paper and pencil for whatever scrap work you have and you're supposed to turn that in at the end. They also give you a locker for all your belongings and you're not supposed to wear any jewelry, you can't even have a watch on. Some testing centers are really, really strict about that. So just, you know, be aware. I left all of my valuables in the car just in case anything happens with the locker, but I needed like my car keys, the testing ticket, and you know, just the basics. So I did take a small bag and then put it in the locker that they provided. Okay, we're getting to the good stuff. How did I study? And I know a lot of people have been messaging me that they're going to take it really soon. How did you study? What did you think? What was on it? So we will go through all of that information, how I study. So I bought this purple book per my friend's recommendation. This one is by Peter Thompson. I don't think it's the best book, but it does the job. It gives you all the information you need. It's a little bit outdated. I have to say, I think it was like published in like 2015 or something. Let's see, 2016? maybe um it reflects the 2015 version of the praxis and we are now in 2020 and soon 2021 a lot of things change over the past five years even um things like how many people are diagnosed with autism that's already changed and so i would just make sure like use this book as a guide it's a great guide it has great information but also check 
like masked for updated information and also like the DSM. There's so many resources online and also your class notes. Just a good way to double check the information in this book. And it doesn't have to be that book that you buy. You can buy any study book. I haven't tried any of the other ones. This one's the only one I have experience with. And the first hundred or so pages are like uh, study material. And so it goes over, you know, everything that they think you need to know. So I just read up on that for a few weeks because I gave myself ample time to study. I didn't want to cram. I didn't want to study for like, you know, five hours a day. Like I had the summer to study and I'm so grateful for that. So I took the time, maybe, maybe like one to two hours, like every other day to sit down and read. And I made a study plan and a study plan is so important so that you don't feel like you have so much to do. So I divided it into chapters and then into like the domains and then I made it so I read like a little portion of it every day and I made notes and highlighted as I needed you know if it's something that I needed to go back and study or if it's something I wasn't very familiar with I made little note cards like these you know just basic ones. And then even if I don't look back at it it was so helpful to just write it down, like to read the information, synthesize it, and then write it down. That's another good study technique. And then if you do want to look over it later, you have it with you. So after I read through everything, made my notes, I felt like I really needed to do a practice test. And usually what I do with these kind of tests, I do the practice test first. So I do it before studying, but I felt like I had limited practice tests for this praxis because it's not very widely used like compared to the GRE or the SAT they have practice tests after practice tests because so many people take it but for this I just felt like I didn't have that many options so I saved it until after I studied and in this purple book that I bought there's two practice tests at the end so I did the first one after I studied everything I scored it um, I didn't do so well I got like a 67% which by the way is passing and so I knew at that point, like I was good to go, probably. But I didn't wanna rely on that just because it was a practice test and it wasn't the real thing. So I wasn't sure like how well it reflected the real test, especially since it's five years old. And so what I did after taking the practice test was I read through each of the questions, everything I got wrong, I wrote it down in my notebook, what the right answer was and why. And that was another good way for me to study. And I found that doing those practice questions really helped me to figure out like how they ask the questions, what they want to know, and what you should really review before taking the real thing. So after doing that and reviewing a little bit more, I took the second practice test, did the same thing. I did 10% better, which was really, really great. <laughs> I got like a 75, 77. So it's actually on par with how I did. I looked at all the questions again, wrote down everything that I got wrong in my notebook or on a piece of paper. And then I felt like I was ready. You know, I, I knew I was going to pass, but just in case, like I just wanted to um, feel more prepared because I I felt like I didn't do enough studying. So what I did was I found an online practice test through ETS and I just felt like, oh, this, this is through ETS. It must be like official. It must be like the same version or created by the test makers. So it must be really good. I was hesitant to purchase it because it was $20 for one test. So you have access to this test for 90 days, but it's the same test, same version, same question order. And it was 20 bucks and I was like, oh my gosh, do I really want to spend this 20 bucks when I'm this like poor grad student right now? But then I thought about it. And I'm like, oh, I guess like when I eat out, I spend like 20 bucks. So I should just, I should just take this test so I can calm my anxiety and feel more prepared. And also for you guys, if you are looking to take this practice test online through ETS, I can tell you about it. I'm here. <laughs> And so I purchased the test and I took it. It was really nice that it was online. It had a similar format. It was timed and I kind of got a better feel for how it was going to go on the day of. The format was a little bit different, which I have a problem with. So the multiple choice, it was harder because while it was out of four options, some of the questions said, check all that apply. And of course, you know, that's a lot harder because you have so many options now, it's not really just out of four. You could check two that are right, but then you have to check the third one to get the full point. And so that made it a lot harder, but it was so nice getting that review in. And 
honestly, like I thought the online test was kind of outdated, which is terrible. Like the wording, the verbiage, I don't know, some weird lingo that like we don't use anymore. So I had a problem with that. And honestly, some of these questions are kind of controversial. They're like, what is the best step or what's the first step? And sometimes I don't agree with the answer, but it's life. You know, like we're, we're here to just pass the test. So it's gonna be okay. There might be those like one or two questions that you don't agree with, or maybe you don't even see the right answer. Or you think all of them are wrong, I don't know. Basically just, just pass the test and make sure you go into the field and you do the right thing. It's the most important thing. Hey guys, it's future Tiffany. I'm editing right now and I realized um, I wanted to change a couple things that I recorded previously so basically content wise obviously i can't share what was exactly on the the real test but i wanted to share how much of the practice test and the practice book reflected the real exam i would say maybe 20 30 percent of the questions were pretty accurate so make sure to use those practice books and like generally special education laws are really important to study and also interventions and consultations. I mean, when you look at the practice books, it also tells you how important those are and they kind of break down which ones to study. So definitely go and make sure you know all of that information. There are also a lot of statistics questions on the practice tests and... I guess we'll get back to the video. Yeah, so while I agree that you should be okay after, you know, completing your coursework because you do learn most of the stuff in your classes, I think it is worthwhile to study for a little bit, brush up, review on the specific details, and then you should be good to go. Nothing to stress out about. Like I said, the passing rate is really low, which makes me question, like, why are we even taking this when it's so low? Like, shouldn't we know all of this information? I think some of it's actually really important, like SPED laws. We do need to know it for our job. But then other things like theorists, like, do we really need to know them? Like, what are we going to use that for? Like, good background, like, base knowledge for sure. But if the passing rate is so low, like, what is the point of us taking this, getting stressed out? And, like, I don't know, like, make it worth something. <laughs> Tips for the day of the test. Get good sleep. I always preach on getting good sleep for like self-care, mental health, physical health, but especially before a test, we know that good sleep is correlated with better memory. So make sure you get good sleep. I did wake up a few times the night before I took the test. I think I was a little bit nervous because I have been studying for this test for around two months. But yeah, as long as you plan out like when you're going to sleep, when you're going to wake up, just make sure you have everything organized and scheduled. And then I suggest wearing layers in case the testing center is cold or a little warm so you can either put the layer on or take it off. Always a good tip. And overall, I studied for around two months. Um, you definitely don't need two months. I kind of stretched it out so I don't have to sit there for, you know, five hours a day and study. I made it so it wasn't as stressful, but I definitely cranked down and like did a lot more stuff the week of the test. And I took all those practice tests the week of. And so I definitely think like if you only have like two or three weeks, you're going to be totally fine. Like it's only 100 pages of study material. You can fly through that in like a few days if you're really dedicated. But that's basically it. I don't think you have to be nervous at all. If you fail, it's okay. Just take it again, review the things that you think you got wrong or review the things that you got wrong on that practice test. And it's okay. I mean, they let you take these tests again for a reason, right? They want you to learn and then pass. So those are my few study tips and all about the school psychologist praxis. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more similar content and I will see you guys next time. Bye!